Walking down the halls of Yonkers High School, one message is clear. If you aren't seriously preparing for college, you need to. College pennants of every color are pinned in the halls for everyone to see, showing all students who walk by where their peers have been accepted. But in Yonkers Public Schools, where 80% of students are economically disadvantaged and 13% are learning English, today's prominent college-going culture hasn't always existed. In fact, just 10 years ago, only 7 in 10 students graduated from the district's high schools in four years, and many fewer went to college. In the early 2000s, the graduation rate was even lower, hovering between 63 and 67 percent. Edward DeChant, principal of Roosevelt High School, started as a basketball coach in the late 90s and in 2006 became assistant principal. And the school was in, in a tough place. It was in a very tough place. But then the district took some steps to put some, some, some staff and, and, and put some money into it to, to help it move forward. I took over in a, as the principal in 2014. I had the opportunity to hire um, many, many teachers. And, you know, what I looked for in the selection process were, were people who were kid-friendly, people who really cared about kids, and people who were going to build and form uh, strong relationships with students. Um, and I think that's, that's the backbone of the turnaround, is, is the relationship our adults in this building have with students. We raise the rigor of the academic program. We raise expectations as far as conduct. And it's been humbling to see the progress of this school, because many people in, in, in Yonkers know that Roosevelt struggled for a long, long time. Jamal Epps, a 2004 Gorton High School graduate, remembers what it was like to be in high school in the early 2000s before Yonkers made some of the changes. High school was more of a place where, you know, I would go and socialize and, you know, I do the work presented in front of me and when it came to like the idea of college and what comes after high school, there was no real like guidance or direction in regards to that. I did college for a few years, eventually through you know, a series of different jobs, I managed to you know, discover the fire department. Honestly, it was probably one of the best decisions I've made in my life. It allowed me to do a lot. It also gave me a lot of life experience in ways that you know, most people wouldn't have. Low graduation rates have long been a symbol of the nation's struggling urban school systems. But today's reality for public school students in Yonkers has changed. The graduation rate for the district has risen to 91 percent, surpassing the statewide average and equaling the Westchester County average. In 2021, of New York's Big Five districts, New York City had the next highest rate, at 81 percent. Buffalo, Syracuse, and Rochester had rates in the 70s. Only five years earlier, in 2016, Yonkers became the first Big Five district to see 80% of its seniors walk across the graduation stage after four years. How Yonkers was able to turn its graduation rate around so much quicker than the other urban districts involves a complicated host of factors. The places that have seen the biggest gains in graduation rates have tried lots of things and a lot of different avenues and levers to make it happen because no one thing in itself Will, will, is enough to really greatly increase graduation rates. It's really a multiplicity of factors and to get there. And also the thing is that you have to stay with it over time. So efforts to improve the graduation rate in many ways have been centered in the schools that historically had lower rates. And therefore, that's why we're seeing large gains among uh, low income and minority students. And also the idea that we recognize that everyone can, and everyone needs to graduate. And so in that sort of uh, effort to get everyone that's where some of the biggest gains have occurred. Administrators also point to a major cultural shift. Parents are more involved than in the past, and teachers and staff are expected to provide a more individualized learning environment and the support to stay on track to graduate. I'm a teacher here at Roosevelt High School Early College. I've been teaching here for 14 years. I also was a student at Gorton High School in Yonkers. I've really seen a drastic change in some of the policies that Yonkers has enforced 
are reinforced with the students. They are helping students, assisting students, especially students that who may or may not have been from this country who are trying to transition into higher level or college or university. And it, it is just so much better now than it was back when I was graduating from high school. I constantly remind the students that I was once in their seats and I know how it is sometimes when you have other issues at hand besides, you know, schooling and you have other issues that are going on at home and you know that I'm always there to help them as long as they're willing to meet me halfway. The Yonkers schools offer a variety of partnerships that connect students with everything from mental health services to help with college applications and financial aid forms. Like in smaller suburban districts, students have ample opportunity to earn college credits. Unlike other districts, Yonkers also benefits from the involvement of a nonprofit dedicated to helping kids prepare for and succeed in college. Yonkers Partners in Education, known as YPI, formed in 2007. It works closely with a fifth of the district's high schoolers, helping them specialize in subjects they might want to study in college. At first, I joined YPI because I heard that it helps you a lot in college. And as a first genera generation, um, I would be the first in my family to go to college. And I knew I needed the most help that I can get. The community here is so um, friendly. Everyone knows each other. And I was able to meet so many friends from other schools. I have a mentor. And we're able to talk not only about school, college, but also about personal life. And I know there's someone there for me. Superintendent Edwin Quesada has emphasized the importance of stable leadership. In order to be successful in a school, you need to understand the culture of that school. So it is certainly a lot more beneficial to bring individuals and ask them to transform schools um, when they know the culture of the school, when they know the culture of the city, and when they understand the expectations. In our high schools, um, the majority of our principals have been in their respective schools for more than five years. Many of them are almost there for 16, 17 years. Um, because of that, sustainable solutions uh, become a reality for those schools. The district faces challenges that many other districts do not, like having a large population of immigrant students who arrive in middle or even high school speaking little English and getting them on a track to graduate. I came from the Dominican Republic when I was 10 years old, so I was finishing fifth grade, uh, started sixth grade here. I came with my mom, which she also didn't know English, um, so coming here was a very difficult thing because it was a whole new country, whole new, uh, like everything. But I got used to it. I feel like I knew I had to learn the language because I was gonna stay in the country for the rest of my life. So it was kind of like, and I had to do a thing, even if I didn't want to. So I put myself for that. And after seventh grade, I started bilingual classes. So I was taking both classes in Spanish and English. And by eighth grade, I was already in all English classes. So I feel like I worked hard for it because it's kind of something I had to do. From the moment they arrived, we believe firmly that they need to feel that they are part of this culture, the school culture in which they find themselves. So once you embrace um, the fact that you belong in that school, that you are entitled to be in that school, then accepting the fact that you have to learn the target language uh, becomes a reality. The financial challenges in the Yonkers Public Schools have been part of our culture for many years. What has changed is um, the mindset. We no longer accept financial challenges as a deterrent for supporting our young people. Uh, rather, um, we, we promote what our students um, have accomplished um, so that the state and the city invest more dollars in, in our schools. For both students and staff, high school in Yonkers looks and feels different than it did years ago. As the district's leadership and culture slowly transformed over more than a decade, those changes were reflected in the rise of the graduation rate. You know, the staff here 
has done amazing work. And, and you know, as the, as the principal and the leader of the building, I've been blessed to have people who are professional, who care, who want to do right by kids. I feel like I've been very lucky because all of my teachers have been to the point, like I love, I've loved all of, all of the teachers I've had. They've been so great and it's like they take care of you. They actually care about you, not just the class that they're teaching and like teaching you math or English. They actually want you to like understand everything and they want you to be okay. So I feel like all the teachers in the school are not just teachers, but they're like, friends, I guess, in a way, or like parents. They're, most of them are parents, so they, they want to take care of you.